In this video, we're going to create an animated component that will serve as an indicator for a page that is being updated live. So here's the sketch. Essentially, what I want to do is start with a circle or a dot that has a circle coming out of it and then fading out. And then the process is going to repeat. By creating this animated component, we're going to be adding into our mobile app design system that we built during this video. So essentially what I did here is I created one giant five hour tutorial and then in the upcoming videos, I'm adding various components and improvements and you can purchase the source file as a whole, which contains this design system and prototype along with these small improvements. So definitely go and check out the description below if you're interested. And now let's get started with our prototype. So what we're gonna do first is use the text tool to type in updating live, right? We are going to be using paragraph text. So this is not gonna be a headline, it's gonna be rather small. So let's just say body one. And then I'm gonna press O on my keyboard to add a circle, okay? This circle is gonna be, I think it could be like 12 points, something like that and we will select both of these and press Shift A to create an auto layout. Spacing for this auto layout is gonna be like maybe eight. And uh, also I think I'm gonna change the color of this circle to some kind of blue, like this one. And after that's done, let me just rename this auto layout to Life Update Indicator. And then let me also do one thing which is select the circle directly and press command option G. That's gonna create a frame around the indicator. So let me just type in indicator container and then let me duplicate this circle. So select the circle directly, command D and then add a stroke, which is gonna be also the blue color. But I think we could do, I don't know, why don't we do two maybe? Let's turn that back to blue. And I am going to take this, take this whole auto layout and create a component from that, right? Afterwards, I'm gonna create another variant, another state. So let me just rename this to state. And this state is gonna be called default and then, or more like start and then end, right? Because it's gonna be an animation that's gonna be looped. I'm then going to do this. I'm going to select this circle ellipse 52, which I'm then gonna actually, I should rename the, both of these, right? So we know what we're looking at. I'm gonna rename ellipse 52 to say circle stroke, right? And ellipse 51, that's gonna be circle fill, right? And also with the circle stroke, I'm going to remove the fill, so just the stroke, okay? Now, when we use an instance of this component, let me do that, let me use that over here into the animated components section. And when I launch the prototype, you can see that nothing is happening. That's because we didn't define any interaction so far. So let me just select circle underscore stroke on the second state and let me make it about this big, right? So about 40 points. And I am going to also select this and turn the opacity of this circle stroke to zero. So what's gonna happen here is we will basically get one state where the circle is gonna be smaller but visible and one state where it's gonna be larger but invisible, right? So the circle stroke is there, it, you, you just cannot see it, right? And in the first one, you cannot see it as well because it's the same color as the circle underscore fill, right? So both of these look identical, but they are different. And that's the key thing we need to make this animation work. So even though this looks completely identical, these are very different and it's important to get the process right. Otherwise, this is not gonna work, okay? And what I'm gonna do now, still when I now reset the prototype and go to design system, you can see that nothing's happening. 
But let's fix that. Let's select the first variant, go to prototype and connect that variant to the second one and do. After delay, change to state end and it's going to be smart animate. And this is going to take, let's say, 300 milliseconds. And it's going to be a custom curve that I'm going to create so that we have a really slow ending, right? A really slow ending. I have to, I have to do something that is barely bent, right? So that we basically get something like this, right? You can check the animation, how it's, the animation is going to look in here. You could use ease out. Basically any of these options is going to probably look good, but I'm just trying to customize this as much as we can. And frankly, I almost never use this setup, so why don't we use it now, right? Cool. So what's going to happen is that Figma, upon displaying this instance of this component, it's going to wait 800 milliseconds, or let's make it a thousand. It's going to wait one second, and then it's going to transition from this state to this state. And it's going to do it in such a way that where there are matching layers, it's going to appear as if it's animated well, it's going to be animated, but it's going to appear as if it's moving, as if the circle is expanding. So basically the circle is going to transition from this size to this size and from this opacity, which is visible, to this opacity, which is invisible, right? Perfect. Now we need to make sure that this animation actually repeats. So when I select the second state, I can then connect that to the first one and I can say that after delay again, which is going to be one millisecond, it's going to change to uh, state start and it's going to be instant. So it's just going to instantly transition back. And now if we can see that the component is placed right here in the prototype, but you cannot see it because it's behind the fade page bottom behind the menu, but it's there. Now when I launch the prototype, when I go to the prototype, we should be getting an animated component. Perfect. That's exactly what I intended. And it looks good, right? It, it looks as if it's truly updating something live, but uh, one small adjustment. I think we could make the stroke one pixel wide instead of two. And I think we could make this slower. So why don't I go back to the prototype setup after delay on the first one. And instead of 300, it's gonna be a thousand and the after delay is going to be 2000 and the stroke is going to be one okay it's going to be one go here reset let's check this out okay i think i definitely prefer this version so it's smaller it's the line is thinner and i think just overall it looks more natural Right? So this is, this is actually what I meant by this sketch, right? Um, I hope this made sense at the beginning. I, I'm not sure though. In any case, this is finished. This interaction is done. If you'd like to save time, support the channel, you, you can go and check the link in the description. That will take you to my store where you can, as I said, you can download the source file for this interaction we just created and also for all of this. So you're gonna get all of this in one single file that I keep on updating. And then remember, you're gonna get also the updates that I created in previous videos. For example, this confirmation animated button, right? So go check that out. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you found this useful. If you did, please leave a like and I will see you in the next one.